Hi, hey, welcome back. Um, I'll start off this morning with I've had some adjustments to my schedule and I got thinking about what's the best, most strategic way to do office hours that can help out the most. And uh, from now on, I will be here at 7 in the morning. Uh, we found out the doors open right about then. Before that, they're locked, but 7, they seem to open up. So we'll be in here. If you have any questions, you can come and ask questions. You can come and just work. And if you have questions, however you want to do it, but I'll be here at 7. Um, and so we'll have that half hour in advance. And then what I did is I broke up my office hour. And, um, I'll do a half hour after my second class today, which goes from 10.15. or no, it goes from after this class till 10.15. So I'll do it right after that for that class. So basically, there's a half hour. And typically, what I find is in office hours, you don't need a full hour. Usually, you can't get a full hour because if we got more than one people, one person asking questions and such. So a half hour is usually enough. If you need more time, uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll take an hour before my Monday, Wednesday class, which is also the Math 250. Uh, and I'll be in my office, ECA 339. And so you can you know, have more time there. We can also meet virtually. Uh, I have a hard time because of because I'm dyslexic and I, I can focus on one thing at a time. <laughs> I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. Usually I'll trip myself. So I, I found I don't do well at trying to run a Zoom session and an in-person session at the same time. Occasionally I can kind of work, but um, I'm either here or I'm online, but I, I don't do good at both. But we can also meet other times uh, through Zoom. Okay, so that's where the Zoom link is there. So just contact me. Uh, give me if you you know give me a couple of options that you have for times of meeting and generally if you give me two or three I can find one of those times that we could meet up uh, online. But again, I want to be here as a resource for you, so that's that. Uh, there's also the tutoring centers and there's there's various ones. There's not just one. There's one at Wexler that's a math center, but there's also other throughout the campus. Uh, so you're welcome to use any of those. Um, there's one that's, there's some in the residence halls. Um, anyway, and they have different hours. So go to the uh, ASU tutoring website and you can find schedule there. They also have online tutoring. So uh, they have more hours. Some of them will go to like 11, uh, but it's by subject as well. Let's see. Let's make this a little bigger. So that's the first major change. Uh, secondly, so we'll just kind of get in the habit of looking at the pacing calendar. And this just focuses us for at least just this first uh, part. You could, again, it's nothing different than the other calendar, but it's just the first part. So we, we went over 10.1. Today, we're going to take a look at 10.3. Uh, neither one of these homeworks is due until next Friday, not this Friday, uh, September 1st. So that's my, you know, so I try to give ample time to, for you to get things done so it's not a, a, a stress. But at the same time, don't say, oh, it's not due till September 1st, so I'll just wait till August 31st or whatever, or 30th. I can't remember how many days are in August, but I will wait till the day before and try to do it all. You could, but again, the idea is you just kind of keep try to keep pace with this one. Uh, I met with my Monday, Wednesday class. They're pretty full, but again, there was a couple seats in there. So if any of you end up missing this section, you're welcome to come. Uh, th for them, we did this 10.1. I didn't get into, it was because of all the other stuff. I'm gonna do the 10.3 actually on Wednesday. We'll do two things here and then they'll be all caught up. But you'll see they're very similar. Uh, and if you wanna just, get double duty, you know, you're always welcome to come. It's, and I, I didn't realize it said the engineering building, it's across on the other side of university, down by Mill Avenue, and there's all these little coffee shops and restaurants. I did, you know, kind of like, feels like a, a different part of campus, like almost like I went to a different country or something. <laughs> so it was nice. Uh, they even have pizza parlors that serve slices. I, I hadn't been by one of those in a long time, so I stopped off and had a slice after class. So it was cool. So anyway, you're welcome to join us, um, especially with testing. We can, you know, if you're 
going to miss this day or something, uh, you'll just have to look in advance. You could come and take it with the Monday class. Uh, they can come to the Tuesday class. We'll, I, I Usually it's just a little bit, so we'll work it out. Um, of course, I always say, well, what if everybody came? Well, I've never had that happen. So, Okay. Any questions or concerns as we start into things? Any problems getting logged into the WebAssign? Sometimes I throw these out and, if, you know, again, if you are, you might want to talk to me after class. And remember, after class I have like, it's 15 minutes until my next one, but it's just downstairs, so I do have a little bit of time to also chat after class. So um, we're going to take a look at the content for 10.3. And this will actually, there's some overlap between 10.1 and 10.3. So 10.1 does get a little bit into uh, limits at infinity as x is going towards infinity, either positive or negative infinity. So then what, remember, when we're talking about the limit, we're asking what is the output value? What is the y value as x gets towards a particular value? Then when we talk about x going to infinity, can x ever actually be at infinity? Good question. I don't know. I've never tried, right? So the idea is that infinity, if you think you're there, you still have further to go. It's a place you never get. But I've read some books on infinity. That's a sort of the philosophical part of math, actually theological part of math, because you start getting mathematicians talking about God when they talk about infinity. Um, it's it's kind of cool. I've looked at it. And there is no yes or no answer. Some say, yeah, you can get there. We just got to figure a way. Uh, and when you get there, it's a beautiful place or so, I, you know, who knows. But what we're working with is, the, what we're going to use with it for a business application is infinity for us is going to be some unknown time in the future. Now, it could be two months, or it could be three months, or it could be 23 months, but it's we don't know. So the way we're going to analyze things, and we'll work a few of the problems together, is that when we've got a problem that says, at some undetermined time in the future, such and such is going to happen. Your, your profits are going to go towards this or something. That's where we're going to use that concept of limit. And we're going to use the limit at infinity. Because we figure if you get out, if it works at infinity, it should work in two months, right? <laughs> or three months, which isn't always true, but it's the best we can do. So that's, that's the application we're going to be using. Um, so we'll look at mathematically what happens uh, as x gets really big with various functions. And typically what we're going to see, there's one of two things happen. As x gets really big, so going to infinity or negative infinity, the functions generally will either go to, to zero or some set value, maybe two or three, uh, depending upon the setup, or they go, the y values actually go off to infinity themselves. And again, if you've worked through 10.1, you've had a little bit of experience with this. Uh, you might have struggled with it because it, we didn't really talk about it directly, but we will talk about it today. So just remember, when we say limit, what we're saying, just replace the word limit with what's the y value, okay? Um, as x gets close to this particular value that we're going to look. So we'll look at the algebraic. And again, in the past, we did a lot of, we had you do a lot of uh, factoring and, and algebra stuff. Uh, we'll do a little bit, but actually what we're going to do is look at uh, a few algebraic principles so we don't have to factor and do a lot of algebraic manipulations. We're just going to look at a few principles. So the first principle, let's take a look, is as x goes to infinity. Now, come back here. Turn on my pencil. Um, n of x, which is this first one, so we've got this polynomial, and let's just think, what we're thinking is as x goes to infinity, using this concept of limit, how do we get close to infinity? Positive infinity. What's happening to x as x gets closer to infinity? Is it is it getting bigger or is it getting smaller? Bigger. Much bigger. So we just like we were doing numerically, we could plug in some really big numbers, a million, a billion, 
157 billion, but, you know, bigger, bigger numbers. And what we're thinking of is what happens to 3x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 4. Uh, so, oops, yeah. So what we're really thinking, kind of like, remember yesterday, we would just start plugging it in. We're really thinking of 3 infinity to the fourth power minus 2 infinity to the second power minus 4. So let's think what happens if I square infinity. I get a really big number times itself. It's getting bigger, right? Um, if I think about negative 4 in comparison to some really big number, does negative 4 matter much? You're a billionaire and you owe a $4 library fine. It's not a big deal to you. Of course, you won't be able to check out a book until you pay it, but we can ignore it. Okay, so that's the idea. Is since we're getting to big numbers, we can certainly ignore the negative 4. Now, the, the other part we're going to look at is, so we've got 3, uh, three infinity to the fourth minus two infinity squared. So we are subtracting, so we've got a really big number, the first part, right? Minus another really big number, but which one's gonna be bigger? The fourth, the fourth right? Because you take infinity, it's a, you multiply it infinity times itself four times, it's really huge. You subtract off, maybe think about half of it, right? Because you only squared it, so it's still, huge, it's infinity. So that's the concept we're going with this, is for these types of ones, when we've got a polynomial, we can really just consider the effect of the largest exponent, because that's gonna have such an overwhelming, even if this was x to the third, x to the fourth is gonna be significantly larger. So again, we, we ignore everything except for that first one, and what's happening as I take infinity to the fourth power, well, the y value is also going to infinity. So that's the limit, okay, for that one. We okay so far thinking of that? No? So this is when you plug it in, you don't use like a table. Well, you could. Uh, but the, the problem we get into here is if you use a table, your calculator is going to blow up. If you try putting a billion to the fourth power, you get such a large number uh, it needs to go to exponents, or it may say overload. It says over, overrun error. So our calculators don't really, we get such large numbers that our calculators are not good with handling it. So with these, what, what I'm going to ask you to do is we're going to just come up with some general principles that when, when infinity is raised to a positive power greater than one, that statement's going to go to infinity. So you just want to think, when I see something like this, something to the fourth power, something to the fifth power, something squared, anything to a power bigger than one is going to go to infinity itself. Okay, and we'll look at some other ones. What if, what if the exponent is less than one? So it's a fraction, and actually we're going to see that goes to zero. So there's there's two places that happen there. Okay, but it's just so today we're getting away from the numerical because our calculators can't really handle it, but uh, we're going to look at some some principles and there's a little sort of cheat sheet that we're going to have at the end that so if that says well if this is the setup and it's going to infinity this is what the answer is going to be and again when I first learned this that's all I did I'd go to the cheat sheet and I would do this I didn't really understand it but I could get the right answers and I'd go through and then after a while it started you know to me I learned by doing and after I do it a while I just you know it's kind of like a game you play it you try to follow the rules and you don't necessarily always understand what's going on, but hopefully after you do it a few times, you will get some deeper understanding um, or at least know how to do it right. So let's look at this next example. We're taking the two functions and we're doing a fraction. So n of x is 3x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 4. And the other fraction, d, or the, uh, d of x, the other function, is x to the fourth minus 3x minus 6. And to analyze this, now we've got a fraction. It's, it's not really just looking what's happening at the top and the bottom. You could do that, but um, what we want to do is we want to look over it and see what's happening. So 
we talked about this first one, n of x, and what's the most important part of this function, n of x? The first part, right? These things we've, we, we kind of discussed are, have an insignificant effect. We're, we, we got such a big number, subtract a little bit, it's still so big, it's at infinity. The same thing happens in the denominator. X to the fourth is going to be so much bigger than all these other pieces, we are able to actually just analyze it as if it was just X to the fourth. Okay, so this is the cool part about doing this is the algebra becomes really simplified. We don't have to factor and try to get exact values. We just say, this thing is going to be so big, all we really have to look at is this fraction 3x to the fourth over x to the fourth. That whatever that limit is, this other thing will have the same limit. Okay, and I guess, to, you know, I should, my notation, the limit as, just a reminder, x is going to infinity, and our answer is going to be what's happening to y as x goes out to infinity. So where's the y? Is it up at infinity? Is it down at negative infinity? Is that zero? What's happening? Uh, and the cool part is, is we can do some simple algebra, simply reducing this fraction. So what's x4 over x to the fourth? Right, three, yeah, so if you have the three in. But the, the x to the fourth will cancel out becoming one, right? One times three. So our limit is now just three. So notice how we just took this sort of principle that if we're taking x to a power and we're going to infinity, we only have to look at the biggest power. We can just ignore everything else. So this is a, it's not, we're not simplifying at this point. We're not really doing algebra. We're just saying that this is the result. Um, and we didn't examine it real deeply because again, using a calculator, we have to put in really big numbers and they, they just become so big. But you could see that as, as you sort of creep up on it, you could put a thousand, hundred thousand, a million, and you'll see your, your output values are getting larger and larger and larger. Okay, from the whole thing. And so it doesn't matter, these things are getting large. And so what we can say is this limit is going to be three. And one of the ways we can verify this is through a graph. So let's see if I can keep these for now. Uh, let's see, let's use there's a couple things I have to do to update. I, um, I've got a free download. I can get a TI-84 calculator emulator, so I've got to get that done. I have one on my home, com on my desktop computer, but that doesn't do me any good here. Let's see. And uh, this, the other thing is uh, I want to upgrade my, my writing tool expired and I now all I have is black ink. If I pay six bucks I get the colors and I like having colors so I'll do that. Okay so what we're going to do is we're going to use the grapher so I go over put OK. I'm going to put in a function and um, so I'll go OK. I'm going to go with f of x so this gives me a template and then um, See, let's put in 3x to the fourth power uh, minus 2x. So notice when I go to actually graph this, I am putting in the actual function, but we're going to see that it's it's not going to matter even with these in here. It's uh, to the second. Right, it's going to go to infinity, or no, no, it's not going to go to infinity. It's going to go to three. So we'll see what that looks like. Minus four, and then we're going to divide this by. I guess I don't really need the parentheses. X to the fourth. Arrow over a minus three x, and then minus six. And we'll go OK. Let's go and look at the graph. We'll go OK. And what you see here, 
maybe make it bigger. Is that as X is getting bigger, again, we're only out to 12 here, but it does seem to be here's, uh, here's 2 and there's 4, so it looks like halfway between 2 and 4, and that's about where 3 lives. Um, what we can do is, let's see, we'll come down... We'll go to, I think it's this one, axes, and I can make the x-axis become bigger. I'm going to give a maximum. This is where, I'm, so this is the x-axis. I'm going to make x become really big. Uh, what's a really big number? Can someone give me a big number? 10,000. 10, okay. Let's see. So we're going to confirm that. Oops. And then when we go back to the graph, oops, let's, oh, go OK. Uh, and notice now at, out at 10,000, graph's got a slightly different window, but it's, it's, it's going, the graph itself is going to 3. So if I went to 100,000, I'd see the same thing. So as x gets bigger and bigger, the graph is going towards, the y value is sticking right at 3. So this is a way to understand the limits as well. Okay, so it worked. We analyzed it with just the largest exponents, and it reduced down to the limit equals 3. But when we graph it, it also shows x equals So this is a way, and it's good business practice to have multiple ways to look at things and verify. Because you don't just want to take something that's abstract, you put it in, oh, I think it's right, I think we're going to 3. Uh, you're going to invest some money, you want to make sure it's going to that, you know, make sure you're making a profit. So if you can have multiple ways to check things out. Uh, got a great assistant. They come and tell you something. You, ask, you, know, you always have to ask them that question. How do you know? Did you try this and this? I know because I was that assistant and I had a boss who did that. And he trained me that I knew when I went in, I couldn't just say this is the answer because I checked this. I knew he was going to ask about this, this, and this. So I started coming in with all of those things. And that's why he paid me so well and involved me in there. But that's the thing you want to do. Is you, want to, you want to know who the people you're working with are, what they're like. Um, and if you have that person, that, again, I, I was a little bit annoyed because I thought, hey, I got the answer. It's going to work. I know it is. But I had to, it, it actually helped me out. I had to prove it, really prove it to myself because I know he was going to ask me additional questions. Okay, so we're okay with that? Limit is 3. Y is going to 3 as X is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. You go to window. And there's going to be a X minimum, X max, Y minimum, Y max. So what you would do on the TI-84 is you'll take the X max, make that big, 10,000, 100,000, million, whatever. And you'll see that graph is just going to go to 3. If we were able to get out to infinity, Y would be sitting there at 3. Good. So we'll put that down. Come back to our slideshow. Uh, so that's what we're going to do from here on out. But this is kind of abstract, isn't it? Just looking at this and these, these cancel and we get this and that's it. But when we see the graph, we see the picture, uh, it maybe makes deeper sense. So here's some rule of thumb type thing. So if we've got a fraction, uh, they're, they're called the indeterminate form because Division by zero is undefined. That's what we've told the calculator, so it'll give you an error if you try to divide by zero. However, what we're going to do with limits is say, but when you divide by zero, see the problem with you, when you call it undefined, most of us think of zero as what kind of a number, big or small? We think of it as a small number. So it's undefined, but we're left with this thing is, it's undefined, so we don't know, is it a big number or a small number? It's actually going to be, if we're dividing by zero, it's actually going to be a huge number. And the way we could do that is with a table is, is try this. Take 2 divided by 1, you get 2. 2 divided by 0.5, you actually get 4. 2 divided by 0.25, you actually will get 8. 2 divided by 0 0.00000001, and you get 2 with a bunch of zeros under. You get a huger numbers. So as you get closer, to division by zero actually produces a huge number, which we call infinity. 
Okay, uh, so and again, coming from the left or the right, these are both. Sorry about that. Um, the bottom line is both of these. The limit is going to go to infinity. These these become huge numbers. Okay, so when we divide by zero, we actually get a very huge number usually. Okay, depends on the algebra that's going on as well. Um, and so, you know, in some expressions, x is going towards a particular value. So this, this is what we were looking at if we had like 2 over x minus 2, and we wanted the limit as x goes to 2. Well, if we plug in 2, what do we get? We get, we get 2 over 2 minus 2. We get 2 over 0. And again, in the past, we were stuck. That's undefined. What we're going to say now with limits, that's actually infinity. So we're going to say that that limit is, is unbounded. It's becoming a very huge number. Okay, so the limit goes to infinity. So that's, that's all this part is about. Um, and here's my little cheat sheet. So we're going to do this, and we're just going to kind of think through it as x, x gets, you know, so involving basically 0 and infinity. Um, so when we divide by zero, that's what this first part says, anything divided by zero basically will go to infinity for the most part. Again, there's a couple cases where we're dividing out a, a common, because we had one with x, what, x to the third minus eight over x minus two, and as x goes to two, the denominator went to zero, but also the, the numerator did, and what we saw is that that actually went to 12, I think it was, right? Something like that. So we did that yesterday's, take a look back. So there are occasions when the denominator goes to zero and it doesn't go to infinity, but those are kind of special cases. Okay. And we'll, we'll, but on, on the whole, if we get some sort of a constant, some number divided by zero, that's going to go to uh, either positive or minus infinity. It depends. If, K, if the number on top was negative, it would actually go to negative infinity. Okay. And again, we could see this graphically, what that looks like on a graph if we were to graph it, is uh, it might, you know, so this, this is the graph of 1 over x. Um, we get a graph that goes like this. So as x gets close to infinity from the right, uh, the y is going to infinity, and then this side is going down to negative infinity. So as x gets close to 0 from the left, y is going to negative infinity. And that's simply... Uh, so this would be a picture of the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over x. Okay, So it could go to either positive or negative infinity. Um, if we're going to multiply, so if you take any number and you multiply it by infinity, you get infinity. So you just, you know, um, and again, you get plus or minus depending upon the value, you know, if k is negative and you multiply by negative infinity, you get a negative times a negative is positive. So those, those rules of multiplication still hold. Negative times a positive will give us a negative. Positive times a positive gives us positive. So the way they want you to think of it is just some number, k. k is just a constant, some any number. If you multiply it by a big number, you get a big number, OK? Uh, if you add or subtract infinity, Right? It's so big, it doesn't matter what k is. Even if k is a relatively big number, it's smaller than infinity. Every number is smaller than infinity. And so you're still out there at infinity. Okay? So that's what this is just saying. So if you add or subtract infinity, you've still got infinity. Right? Um, if you're going to take infinity divided by a number, it's kind of like a multiplication, right? You could think of it as multiplying by 1 over k as a fraction. Again, it doesn't matter what that number is. Infinity is so large, it's so far out there, it's still infinity. So you can't touch it. <laughs> um, so that's this one here. So it's just basically infinity. If you either multiply a number, and these are constant values, either a number or divide by a number, you're still at infinity. Way to think of it. And then finally, this one is, is sort of, it's kind of the first and the last that are the most important. If we have some number divided by infinity, now just think when we, as we take a fraction, the denominator gets bigger and bigger. What's happening? One divided by 10 is one tenth. One divided by a million is one 
millionth. We're, we're getting actually small, the y value is getting smaller, we are getting closer to zero. So as the denominator becomes bigger, we're going to get very, very small and again close to zero. So that's, that's that one. And then uh, finally, sort of with exponents, um, because we'll look at a few of these, if the exponent goes to infinity, it depends as if k is bigger than 1, because uh, if k was less than 1, then it's a, a decimal, right? Um, and so that's all this is looking at, is if you take any number, raise it to the infinity power, you get very big. Okay. If you take any number and raise it to the negative infinity, uh, let's talk about this a little bit. So if I take 2 to the negative 3 power, what do I really get? That's the same thing algebraically as 2 to the positive third power in the bottom, right? So we can see how this works. So if I had 2 to the negative infinity, what's that going to look like? That's going to look like 1 over 2 to the infinity. 2 to the infinity becomes huge. 1 over something that's huge goes to 0, okay? So this is this is the one that tends towards zero. So that's how that one works. But just, just remember how your exponents work. And negative exponents uh, don't give us a negative number necessarily. They could, but a negative exponent is just, think of it as the opposite. So instead of repeated multiplication, it's repeated division. So that uh, oftentimes that negative sign, we want to think and look at it as if it's an opposite sign. Okay, so again, these are this is the sheets. and. What we're going to do now is we're going to come back and we're just going to apply these basic principles. Okay, so we're not going to have to go back. We again, we can always go to the graph, and it will verify what we come up with analytically and abstractly. But uh, these are the principles we're going to use as we talk through it. Okay, so we're going to look at a few examples, uh, and you'll notice whenever it has these red letters, that's something I did a screenshot of the homework. Uh, what happens with the homework is you will have that same problem, but the red numbers are randomly generated. So your red numbers will be different, but the rest will all be the same. Okay, so we'll, we'll take a look at that. But let's take a look at this first one here. We'll call this number one. Uh, as we look at this, where the limit's going to infinity, right? So that's the first part we have to look is where is it going to? Since it's going to infinity, we know a polynomial. What's the only part of the polynomial we need to consider? The first part, the one with the biggest degree. So this one in the numerator, this one in the denominator. We just get to say we don't care about those things. They're just they're inconsequential. Okay, so it's uh, it's not that we're there's some new math rules that we can actually cancel them out. It's just that they're they just don't factor in. Okay, so we're going to look at this as if it was just two to the x or two x squared over x squared. And again, we're still looking at the limit, but I like to get a little sloppy and just write this in. So now we, if we do a little bit of algebra, can we reduce this fraction? Right, yes. x squared divided by x squared is 1, so this is going to be 2. Done. End of story. So again, we just took this sort of principle that is, as we take infinity to the fourth power, that's our or infinity to the second power, that's all we got to worry about. And since we've got a fraction, we can do the a little bit of algebra without having to go into factoring, without having to do a lot of stuff, and just say, this is going to go to 2. That's it. Um, how about number 2? They look awfully similar. Oh, they are similar, but one's going to negative infinity. These are the types of things I miss. <laughs> uh, this one's going to negative infinity, so we've got to talk about this a little bit, because does that mean that it's going to go to negative 2? Well, let's go through the steps. What's the important parts of this function? What's, what's, since we're going to negative infinity, a, a, big, a big negative number, right? Uh, wh what are the only parts that are, make a difference? 2x squared over x squared. Okay, same thing. Now, the x squared and the the x squared in the top and the x squared in the bottom will cancel out, but before we do that, let's think about that. If I take a number, if I take a negative number, because negative infinity is going to be like a negative number, right? 
I mean, it's negative. So I, I would use negative. If I take a negative number and I square it, what kind of number do I get? Positive. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So that's, a, that's the, another concept we bring in. I get a positive value. So again, if these were cubed, I'd get two negative values, but then I'd get a negative over negative, which then becomes positive. But go through the process of thinking what's happening, because sometimes that makes the difference. So when I have even exponents, it doesn't matter if I go to positive infinity or negative infinity, the, posit the, the even exponent will turn it all to positives, right? Uh, but odd exponents, 3, 5, 7, they have that extra negative, they will produce a negative if I'm going to negative infinity. So those are the ones we really have to watch. Uh, but here I can still cancel, and this one is still going to 2. So it doesn't matter if I go to positive infinity or negative infinity, my y value is going to 2. Okay, that's end of story. And again, I could see that if I graph it, I would see the, the, the graph, the y value is, is shooting off towards y equals 2. So kind of a horizontal line. That's it. So far, are we okay? Okay. Um, how about this one over here? We'll call it number three, again, from our homework. It looks a lot more messy, but what do we get to do? Just the biggest exponent. Boom, boom. We don't care about that. We do notice it's going to negative infinity, so do look at that. And we've got an odd power, so maybe that makes a difference. In the denominator, we have an x to the fifth as well. So that's the one we're going to look at. This one's smaller, so we don't worry about it. So we're going to analyze this as if it was x to the fifth over 8x to the fifth. Now, if I take x, a negative number, and raise it to the fifth power, do I get a positive or a negative number? Negative. I get a negative number because I've got five negatives, and the evens match up and I still got it negative. So what I want to think of this is maybe this is going to, uh, these are both going towards a negative. So, so the answer really, when I think of it, I want to think of this as, as I cancel these out, because that's a value of one, I want to think I really got a fraction of negative one over negative eight, because I'm going towards, this is the way I think of it. Again, it's not the only way to do it, but you're going to see I've got a negative over a negative. That becomes positive. So the limit goes to positive 1 eighth. That's our limit, which is 0.125, I think. Put in a calculator or something. Either way. OK, does that make sense? Now, when the, when the exponents are the same, you'll see it, it's, they'll either both go to positive infinity or negative infinity. So it, it always ends up negative over negative becomes it. But we're going to see in that. I think in the next couple examples, there's there's a couple of instances when the the exponents are odd and they're they're not they're not going to always cancel out. So that's why I want you to at least be thinking when you're going to negative infinity, think about what's happening to that negative, because it might factor in. Let's see what time is it? 8:08. We go. Let's see. We start 7:30. We go to 8:45, right? Okay. So I was. We got plenty of time. OK, so now we get into something a little different. A little different. Uh, same concept when we analyze a fraction with polynomials. We just have to look at the largest degree. But we've got something a little different going on. When we look at the largest degrees, and again, ignore the other stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. There's like a book about that or something. So that's the math. That's math equivalent of don't sweat the small stuff. Um, we get to analyze this as if it were 10x squared over 9x to the third. Okay. So that's we basically ignore everything else, just get the bigger ones. Now we do some simplification. Um, 9 and 10 don't have any common factors, so that's 10 in the top and 9 in the bottom. But I've got x squared and x to the third in the bottom. What does that reduce to? It's kind of 2 minus 3, right? You think about subtracting exponents. But there's more in the bottom, so that means there's going to be an x left here in the bottom. I think that there's these two cancel with 2 here, and so there's, one, there's x to the 1 power left in the denominator. Again, multiple ways to think through this, but we simplify it. It's going to, it's, it's bottom heavy, right? 
So we've got this x remaining there. But what does that x become? x is going towards negative infinity. So as x goes towards negative infinity, what's going to happen to this whole thing? And again, you could this is kind of you could think of plugging it in. The bottom's going to get huge, right? Huge but negative. And when you've got a fraction that has a huge value in the bottom, what happens? One over a big number, yeah, it's going to go to zero. Now it's going to negative big, which means it goes to negative zero. But negative zero is the same thing as positive zero because it's it's in the middle there. So this is one that's sort of cool. We don't have to worry too much about the signs. Um, this still just goes to zero. So it's this idea of one over or 10 over a big number. Again, it doesn't matter. That's k over infinity goes to zero. Okay, so that's, again, we just used a property. If you graph it, you'll see that that's what's happening. As, as x is going to the negative infinity, the graph is getting closer to zero. Now, it might be coming from the negative side, which is what I think will happen, but it's still getting close to zero. Okay. So sometimes that, that negative, that's how you'll see it. It's, it's, does it go to zero from the bottom, or does it go to zero from the top? Questions on that one? Does that make sense? And please, if you do have questions, go ahead and ask them, because if you have them, somebody else does, I'm sure. There's no... Okay. And again, you see that with the red letters in there, it means I took a screenshot of the homework. So that's one of your homework problems. And again, all that's going to change on you is the numbers in front. So hopefully you can do just fine with this. And then now we've got the third case. So we have the first case where the exponents are the same in the top and the bottom, the, big, the biggest exponents, right? We had 2 over 2, x to the squared, x squared. Uh, the second case was what the denominator had a larger, um, what do you call it, a larger exponent. And then this is the third case where the numerator has the larger power. Let's see what happens here. Okay. So again, we just look at the largest degrees, the largest exponent. We get a not sweat the small stuff. And so then we're going to look at this as if it were 8x to the 4th over 7,000x to the 3rd. We'll do our algebra. So x to the 4th divided by x to the 3rd, we can just subtract. This is going to give us 8x, right, 8x to the 1 power over 7,000. Now x is going towards negative infinity. And what was our rule? We've got basically 8 sevenths is just a number, right? So we could look at it as this. Some number times x. x is going to negative infinity. Let me uh, change this a little bit. So if I think of this as I, if I take 8 over 7,000, which is actually a fairly small number, right? 8 divided by 7,000. It's going to be pretty small. And I multiply it by negative infinity. What do I, where am I going to end up? Negative infinity, because it's so huge, it doesn't matter even if I'm multiplying by a very, very small number. It, infinity is just like this thing that, it's not a number, it's a concept. It's, there, are, there are different sizes of infinity, so there are larger infinities than other, but that's a whole nother, again, read that book. Uh, it was uh, Keys to Infinity. It was kind of, it was interesting. I didn't read the whole thing. I scanned it a bit, but... Um, it gives some interesting. So this one's actually, and this one is where we have to be careful about the sign. If it was going to positive infinity, we would go to, the y would also go to positive infinity. Again, you could graph this, and, and what this is suggesting to me is that somehow, um, I don't know what the graph's looking like. Well, it's maybe like this, messy. But at the end, if towards as x goes to infinity, it's, the y is going down to negative infinity. So I don't know what the rest of it looks like, but way out at infinity, it's, it's going down. Okay. Uh, at positive infinity, because if I would have plugged in positive infinity, I would have got positive. So then, so this is going to be something that goes like this, right? So, and again, you could graph it and you would see this. At, at the far extremes, the, the left-hand side, x is going to negative infinity, y is going to negative infinity. The far right-hand side, x is going to infinity, y is going to infinity. Yes? 
next to the power of 3, because the degree of the numerator with 80x to the power of 3 is the same as 7,000 x to the power of 3, right? And you said to take the biggest degree from the, the equation. The biggest degree in the top and the biggest in the bottom. Yeah, so sorry about that, yeah. So in the end, you'll see that that's, we saw that x to the fourth is, is the, so it kind of, you could kind of put that aside. But we just, if they're the same, they're going to cancel out, and then it's just the coefficient that it goes to. So um, thank you for that clarification, yes. Uh, so we, we kind of analyze it with looking for the largest degree in the numerator and denominator, and then simplify from there. But you'll, you'll kind of see that you could also just say, all that matters is x to the fourth, that's going to go to. But the problem is if we think of just x to the fourth, we might say that that's going to go to positive infinity, right? Because it's a, a even power. But because of what happens, the, the, the denominator is x to the third, it does have some effect, in fact, that it, it makes it now a, uh, an odd power, x to the first power. So then it does. So there's a few little tricks in there. Good question, though. Awesome. Doing okay? And again, some of these, uh, uh, this also comes from, actually, I think I might have taken this off of a, one of the tests or something. Sometimes in the test they do, they go to this and it, it, it tends to stump some students because they see what all these letters and they don't know what that means, right? Um, when we do in math all these letter stuff, uh, X and Y are variables, the other letters are just numbers that we don't know what they are. So they're, they're sort of like a, a constant variable, which doesn't make any sense, but they don't really vary. They're, they're a number that's set. So we do these the same way, is we just look at the, the biggest power. And now be careful, a squared is just a number, right? Because the d definition, and here's what's supposed to always happen in math, is the, the letters at the beginning of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, those are all supposed to be numbers sort of constants that we don't know. So we use those. The numbers at the end, x, y, z, um, those are what we use for our variable numbers, so the inputs and outputs, okay? So what we're looking here is the degree of the x. So we're gonna take a look at this term, and then in the denominator, the largest one is a minus a, b, x to the third. So we ignore every other number they're unimportant. We're going to look at this as minus a squared b over x squared over minus a b. Uh, what was that? x to the third? I think. And so then now we do algebra. b divided by b is 1, so we can that kind of cancels out. a squared divided by a, well, that's a to the first power in the top. And then I have x squared in the top and x to the third in the bottom. Well, two of these x's in the top cancel with two in the bottom, leaving x to the first in the bottom. Okay, so what I have is a negative a to the first power. And in the bottom, all that's left is x to the first power. And remember, this is the limit as x goes to negative infinity. So looking at this, this is some number a, again, it's negative a, whatever, but as x goes to negative infinity in the denominator, what's going to happen to the whole number? What's going to happen to that fraction? A really big denominator It's going to go to zero, right? And again, it goes to negative zero, because that's where we're going. And it, But if you, again, if you think of it, you've got a negative and a negative, but it's, it's going to go to, well, let's, let's do this negative a over negative infinity. We look it up, that tells us that this is going to go to zero. Okay, you could think of it as zero. So what it's really doing on the graph is the graph probably looks something like this, where it, from negative infinity is coming up and going towards zero. Okay, so as further out we go to the left, y value is getting closer and closer to zero. Now, does it ever get there? Well, again, if we got to infinity, it probably does, but the idea is we never get to infinity. And does that make some sense? Okay. So this is a, 
again, this is some of these things I took screenshots from the textbook. So you do have a textbook in the WebAssign. Um, I can't remember exactly how to find it, but there's there's some place that'll say ebook. You can search it. If you have questions, let me know. I, I can do maybe a few screenshots. I found it before, obviously, that's where I got this. Uh, it's just saying, all this is saying is that when you have all these degrees, you get to ignore, you know, this is x to the n is the largest in the top, x to the m is the largest in the bottom. We get to ignore everything else. That's all this theorem is saying. So it's, and when math comes with a theorem, they'll usually have several pages of descriptions that, again, I struggle to even understand what they're talking about, but I said, okay, guys that spent, you know, the mathematicians, they did all their work, they're saying it works, I'll believe them. Because if I spend too much time trying to understand this, I'll probably confuse myself more than anything else. Uh, again, because I'm not a mathematician and I'm, I'm using this in the, I, I wanna know how this is gonna help me run my business, right? I don't really care whether so much if it's proved or not. But mathematicians, that's, that's their domain. They, they wanna do the proof. So that's, that's what they do and basically the result is that I, I would need to use as a practitioner, someone doing the math, is just that I just need to look at the largest exponents. Again, the largest in the top, the largest in the bottom, and then I can do my algebra, and that's all I have to do. But I don't have to look at, you know, I don't have to get scared because it's got a lot of terms in it, because I'm gonna ignore most of those terms, right? I'm just gonna have one term in the top, one in the bottom, and that's gonna give me my limit. Okay, and that's the end of the PowerPoint. What I want to do is go into the homework itself. So to give you, a few, I've gotten a few questions about the homework and I know, you know it's a little bit at the start. So I'm going to actually pull up, and I'll do this from time to time, some of the homework questions. And I want to show you the setting because we'll get into the, the word problems at the end. And it seems to reorganize, oh wait, this is... Uh, I got to make sure I don't go into the master course because that'll mess it up for everyone else. I did set up two separate courses, but I, I'm basically working through this one. And we're in 10.3. Oops, I don't want to do that. I don't want to edit. I want to preview it. So I've got this cool preview mode. Oh, view, view. So let's view it. So you see this one does have more questions, 18. Um, so it will take a little long. Again, it's not technically hard due until, well, you know, not this Friday, but the week, you know, next Friday. But again, if you could get it done this week, and again, you plan out what works best with your schedule, get it done today if you want, get it done over the weekend if you want, but certainly try to get it done well in advance of the due dates. Um, so we see some of these as x goes to infinity. Again, all we're gonna do is ignore everything except the two largest exponents, do our division. So these are, are the types we've been working. And here's that A, B, C, D. And again, just remember A, B, C, and D are, are just numbers. Um, and again, just treat this as we've been doing and reduce it. And the nice part about these, these are multiple choice. Be careful, remember with the multiple choice, you do not get five choices. Uh, on this one with, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, with five different answers, you might get two, you, you might get one or uh, two, you might get two or three attempts at it. But probably a lot of the multiple choice, especially if it's yes or uh, true or false, you get one attempt at it, because if you get it wrong, then you know the right answer, and so that's how it does that. So just try to go through those. Um, and again, I'll let you, what I do is if you've got a 90% on the homework or above, I go and manually make those all 105%. So I, I'll give you even the extra credit for the doing it, you know, 24 hours early. So I kind of do that to make up because I figure if you're up in the 90s, um, we're not going to penalize for small little deals that happen. Okay, so try to get it to at least 90. Try to get it all, but there's those. Okay, now this is uh, oh, so that one's a multiple choice thing. Uh, another multiple choice. I think you'll be fine with these. Um, you can use the properties here. Again, this is a, using an exponential. I'll give you some choices with those. Here we go. This is what I wanted to take a look at is some of these. Um, that up. Um, 
this is an application of how we would use this in business. So the cost of finding crime in a country increased significantly during the periods 82 to 99. Total spending on police is approximated by uh, police and courts. So police, PFT is police, CFT is courts. Uh, and this is what I'm talking about is sort of this, I don't know why they always choose negative sort of things. Um, I've, anyway, why do math people always talk about prison populations, criminality growing or something? But they do. I don't know. Um, but anyway, they said there, T is a time in years since 1980 and then compute the ratio of the cost of police divided by the cost of course to do decimal places. Um, and they have the time going to infinity. Now this doesn't mean that time is actually going to go to infinity and we're calculating what, you know, because that makes no sense at all. It never did to me. I mean, I can't think of what's going to happen in a thousand years. Probably society is going to be extremely different. But what we use this for is the thinking of, is this going to some sort of limiting value or not? Okay, so this is where we use it. And in this case, it's really not that hard, but it's just this thinking. I, have, I had a hard time starting this because I go, time doesn't go to infinity. I mean, if I'm good, I might get 100 years, right? But that's about the extent. It's, I'm not going to live to be 1,000. At least, I don't think so, unless there's some major change. I'm not sure I want to live to be 1,000. But um, So this one we just analyzed. We put the, the first function. So 1.758t. And I'm just going to shortchange. That's, that's the biggest. Um, degree, so that's all we have to worry about. We don't have to worry about the 29.51 and the denominator. We just have 1.063t. We see the t's are going to cancel. And again, we, we didn't worry about these little guys. The t's cancel. So this is what the limiting factor is going to be. So at some unknown time in the future, that's what the ratio of the cost will become. Okay, and so we could actually do the math. I'd plug it in your calculator. You'll get an answer. And that's what goes here. So that's the limit. And the second one is actually going to be really the same answer. If the trend continues indefinitely, that's the idea of infinity. It's, a, it's an unknown time. The annual expending on police will be blank times the annual spending on courts. And since the police is in the top, the courts is in the bottom, this limit we come from is the, the, the how much more. And you can see it's almost, you know, it's 1.7 times more basically. Close. Uh, you'll get an exact value. It's maybe 1.6 something or whatever. But uh, do the math on it. Do the, you know, plug it in your calculator. But these two answers are really the same. So they, they do this thing where you just mathematically find the limit. The second is a sentence that helps you to interpret what's going on. So it's a cost of police are, are going to, there's always a sort of ratio where whatever the crime's doing, cost of the police is going to be this, and cost of the course is going to be that. Now, they may change, but the, the, as the cost of the police go up, the cost of the courts are going to go up to keep up with it. And if they go down, which is what we would hope society does, is we stop throwing people in jail and we, we make a more equitable society where we're not, you know, we're not have to taking things from each other. We're not having to throw people in jail for having a good time, which... I mean, that's a lot of the times, a lot of the crimes, that's what it's about. Anyway, so that's, that's the word problems. That's what they're going to apply, this idea of infinity. But what they're applying is, is that infinity, in terms of our examinations, is an unknown time in the future. It's not really infinity. It might be three months. It might be three years. But it's some unknown time in the future, and that's what we use the infinity for. And we'll see the same thing. We get this sort of limiting things and... Um, but I guess to this day, I still have a hard time thinking of this as applicable because time I can't think of as an infinite. Okay, another similar type thing. So these last ones have all of them, and and again, they're they're a little bit more challenging, a little wordier, but it's the same type of concept. Is we're looking at infinity being the definition of unknown time in the future. Okay. We apply it, we get an answer, and then the second answer is really generally going to be the same numerically, but it's going to help us interpret what the question's asking. Okay.
questions. Okay, good. So, how many, you starting to feel comfortable with the class as we, and that's what we're going to look for. If you're not, what can we do? Come early, 7 o'clock, I'll be here. So if you got questions on Thursday, come early, we'll, we'll go through them, right? Uh, we can also have, as you see, we've got some time, you know, we can, t we can discuss things in class too. Thanks.